Which industries do you see the biggest opportunities in machine learning? Coming from an investor uh, viewpoint, I'm really excited to see very traditional industries um, have problems within it tackled by machine learning. So what I particularly mean by that, and by traditional I also, I, I, seeing a lot of startups, I think there's already a lot of momentum in the area, but we're talking about you know transportation for sure with autonomous vehicles, um, construction even, agriculture, definitely health, both from a diagnostic and operational uh, viewpoint. So things where um, some of the new um, developments in both machine intelligence, classical AI problems, and vision, NLP, but also just how do you make processes more optimizable? How do you build up that data stack where we can you know, collect the right kind of data so we can start solving operational problems in these things? Like This is the thing that kind of makes me super excited to get up in the morning. Trying to solve those problems, which mm -hmm. companies are you focused on from an investment perspective? The stage that I invest at is primarily seed. So when I'm talking to people, these are founders, sometimes pre-company, and I'm really helping them sort of match make with um, end customers and end markets. And so what that means is I this is probably pre-product even, and it's just a bunch of machine learning talent looking for a problem that that makes sense to be solved by the tools that they developed. And so, um, yeah, really it's kind of like a speed dating thing where I'm like, oh, okay, you're interested in this or you have the capability in vision in this kind of context. Well, I know some folks in like this retail area or you know, uh, needing solutions on the edge for uh, agriculture here and you should talk to them. And so it's a lot of just mixing uh, people up together and see if magic happens. So doing all of that connecting. But, yes. so, but what are the biggest challenges facing companies to leverage artificial intelligence? Mm, I think if you're coming from a more, maybe uh, coming from the end market and then looking for solutions, it's difficult because you see a lot of announcements about, oh, we have like, oh, you know, killer robots here, or maybe less, you know, maliciously, we just have so much advancement in like vision here and, and that. It's like hard to really understand what is the organizing principle behind all of these. And so, as, yeah, just from the investing point of view, when I do talk to people who are, um, in the end markets, I try to give them a better framework or a better abstraction to understand it. And so it's more a matter of like, hey, if you have data structured in this way, then you can do this with this data. It's kind of a statistical massaging input-output. And so if you come at it from that framework, then you can really be more, I guess, imaginative or ambitious with what the applications. You like that problem-solving <laughs> ability. What, what made you get excited? What made you want to work in the technology space and, and you have this love of mathematics? Yeah, okay, so technology space, definitely coming to the Bay Area, caught the bug. Um, uh, as you alluded to, I came here primarily to do something incredibly abstract and wanted to be an academic. Um, and it was a combination of seeing a lot of people that I knew uh, do both internships or work in tech and then also just doing it myself that I completely did a 180 around, okay, and no longer do I want to just be kind of, you know, and on the ivory tower, tower doing my own research and not have much kind of impact on the world. But and what made you change, like what made you make that decision, that choice? The feeling of being empowered with, hey, I have these techniques like machine learning, statistics, and they can have impact in driving decisions, better decisions. If if I'm really, really, really you know, get wiser and learn from a lot more uh, people and, and sources, but they can drive a lot of impact in the world. And I think that kind of energy in the Bay Area that gives you a sense of like, hey, as one person or a group of people, you can actually have huge um, impact in the world. That's the kind of uh, idealism that I'm running on. How do you share that idealism? Are you, do you mentor others or has there been a specific key person in your career that's, that's mentored you and, and helped you along the way? So in terms of mentoring, uh, before I get to being mentored, uh, I go back to Toronto. There's a um, I guess an incubator of type a program called Creative Destruction Lab and I think they do such a great job combining both the technical talent in Toronto and the kind of wealth of, of AI um, expertise there both on a technical level but also the momentum that they created and business interest and so I go back with a bunch of investors I think CDL was started by Siobhan and Ajay Agarl in um, Rotman School of Management and so yeah I'm trying to kind of bring it to more uh, to more technical founders in, in the Toronto space. But 
around here, I mean, you know, you just have a lot of uh, people looking to do startups, and so if I can kind of find the the ones that the, the kind of risk that I really like taking is super good te technical talent, very ambitious, has a lot of hustle. They just kind of need the right resources to look at problems in a specific way, and so I can be that connector and and really speak to, yeah, getting excited about what they want to solve. So with those startups, what is the one thing that you see that needs to change in order to help them succeed? I think it's, at least in the Bay Area, I don't know if there's any particular, like, one solution. Um, there is a lot of hype, and the hype is primarily, you know, right now the talent pool might be a bit more narrow, and so um, as a result, uh, people can get excited about the idea of machine learning, deep learning for X. Um, I think one trend that I'm excited about is a lot of these tools will eventually get commoditized. And it's really kind of what, where, what kind of work can you do right now to help educate um, people who are maybe coming not from a PhD in this area to be able to use this in very imaginative ways. And so the, the correct kind of positioning or abstraction of like what this is capable of. And then also as the tools become more commoditized in the way that it's accessible um, software, um, wise for these people to apply, then people can like do more you know interesting things with them.